All right, this week, this is a picture of a river table. Um, it's just a random picture I pulled off online and printed out so that I could show you. This is my inspiration for our tumbler this week. So um, we're going to do a blue mica swirl with some glitter um, background and then we're going to do wood grain on top and um, take off like a peekaboo or a geode or whatever you want to call it. Um, we'll work it out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've, I've mixed up epoxy and uh, you don't need to sit here and watch me do that for four minutes. I use DIY epoxy, artisan epoxy, and um, I do heat up part A. I've mixed up 40 mils here. I'm doing a 20 mil cup, um, but you need to have more than you would use just to coat uh, glitter on a cup because um, you're mixing it in different different pots and, and you have to put clear glitter, or clear epoxy on your cup first so that things can move around. And I will likely have some left over which I will just um, throw into a mold and, um, and we're good that way. So the first thing I've got, I've got two glitters here that are not pressing images. One of them is a small chunky, but it's it's a turquoisey and blue and and goes really nicely with what I'm doing here and this is a fine um, it's just the color I wanted and I don't happen to have that color in pressing images and then I have a little bit of a chunky mix called it's a Miranda thing um, this was named after me and I love this glitter and it's um got some blue and green and purple shift to it so I'm just going to use a little bit of, of this one just just to make it pop. I also have pressing images micas. I've got burst of blue and sapphire C and I'm about to put a little bit of this is peacock into a cup. And I just left this one so that you can see I, I put a very little bit in here. Like you do not need much. Just the end of one of these little bar sticks is plenty for what you want it to do. So um, you get really good coverage with it that way. I really need to get these into containers because it's easier than dealing with zippers and bags and stuff and I get all messy when I have them in containers. And I'll just set that aside for now and grab a baby wipe or perhaps just change my gloves. That would be the better, the better thing to do right now because I need to put clear on Uh, lost a charm. Alrighty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure all my important stuff is covered up here. I don't want to get epoxy on my watch. So I'm just going to um, pour a little bit of epoxy into each of these cups and mix them up. And I want to make sure I leave a good amount of the clear so that I can actually have enough to fully cover the cup. I can always add more to these pots, but I can't take the color away once it's in there. So, put that on my parchment so I still have it there. And then I'm just going to start mixing. I 
This peacock is such a lovely turquoise color. It's so nice. I'm just going to take my, my baby wipe and I'm going to wipe my stick in between each thing so I'm not cross-contaminating. You do want it to not be gloppy. If, if you're filling a mold with, with um, glitter mixed with epoxy, you want it to be gloppy like that because it's not going to um, sink to the bottom all of it. But because we want this to flow a little bit, we need to make sure that it's got a little bit of movement to it when you're working with chunkies. I am most likely going to be adding a lot to these, but just to get them going we'll start with this. All right, we have our bases kind of mixed here. I'm going to be adding to it, but I want to do my um, my cut part first. So I'm just going to pause this for a second while I get set up over on the other side. Okay, here's my cup. Now, I've painted it um, Rust-Oleum Oasis Blue, and um, because micas and stuff when you're doing a swirl will pull away like almost always will pull away from the um, the edges the top edge and the bottom edge and they will leave a little bit exposed so you want whenever you're working with something like this you want to make your cup one of the colors that you're doing so that it becomes a part of the design. Um, alcohol inks too, you wanna to do that because, um, like if you're doing an alcohol ink swirl, anytime you're doing a swirl, because if you're doing an alcohol ink swirl, um, epoxy will only handle so much alcohol and then it will start to repel it and pull away from it. And when it does, it'll expose the cup beneath it. So if you've just got it painted white and you're doing a fire cup, that's not going to work out for you because you're going to have these big white blobs in the middle of it and, and whatnot. So um, always when you're working with swirls of any kind, um, base paint your cup the same color or one of the colors that you are using so that it's not obvious that something happened bad. So um, I just want to show you quickly when you're leveling your cup, um, if, you, if your cup isn't on here exactly level, you're going to get either a mushroom at the top or you're going to get a mushroom at the bottom um, because the epoxy is traveling up and down the cup until it, it uh, is finished. So what you want to do is you want to get a torpedo level like this. And don't level it this way because cups are tapered or this one's a modern curve, so it's curved. Um, so what you want to do is you want to hold it up against the bottom of the cup like this and the top bubble should be right in between the lines if that's the case then you're level and you're good to go so um, let's turn this baby on and get moving try to decide if I need you to have light here I think so yes all right so first things being first we need to just cover this with a nice thin layer of epoxy. Not as if you're coating glitter, just, just a thin layer. You just want movement to be able to happen. I should have plugged my heat gun in before I started because the heat gun is kind of necessary to this process. 
I guess it's time to start wrapping. I pulled it all on this one. Okay. I've got a nice thin layer of epoxy on here and I'm just going to dump in quickly into my cup so that I have it there. So I can take my glove off now because I don't need that for this part. And I'm just going to start. Well, first I'm going to torch. Sorry, missed a step. I these bubbles. Now we're going to start drizzling and we're just going to, no rhyme or reason, just randomly all different directions, just get it on here. There's no plan. Swirl cups it tends to be random. It's just make sure you get the bottom. The bottoms on swirl cups go so cool sometimes. All right. So you just want to make sure you're you're evenly going here. Wipe that off. I'm going to do all my micas first, and then I'm going to start throwing in my glitters. Alright, I'm going to sapphire C. And you could definitely, if you wanted to do a swirl that like a Milky Way where everything is going the same. You you can feel free to do that, but this to me is very much a free form kind of art. And you just wanna just random, be as random as you can while still getting good coverage. All right. Now here comes my my namesake glitter and I'm just going to just apply that random places. I just want to give it a bit of a pop and we'll decide because some of this is obviously going to be covered up with a wood grain where we'll decide what to keep and what to not when it comes time. So we're 
just going to lay that on there just in random little sections here spread it out I'm really excited this has been in my head for a while so I'm really excited to be actually doing this finally the same thing with this small chunky it's thickened up on me a little bit here so that's okay just going to add to that watery effect these colors Alrighty now should have maybe swirled my micas first and then added my glitters, but stuff happens sometimes when you're just winging it. And again, any spots that we don't like are going to be covered up by the wood grain anyway. So Okay, we've got all of our colors on there. And we could at this point just leave it go like that. It will spread to some degree. Um, but I like to use my heat gun when I'm doing a swirl. So I'll plug it in. I never store my heat gun plugged in because one never knows what's going to happen. So I'm just going to turn this on. It's going to be a little bit loud, but I'm going to turn it on and try and get it moving just a little bit. We hold it fairly close. You see how that all fanned out right there? That's not what I wanted. I should have swirled it beforehand, but, um, and then added the glitter on, but we'll make it work. But that's, see how much it moves when you, when you add heat. So, um, next time I would definitely swirl my micas and then apply my glitter in spots, but this is still going to look really good. Um, once we get to the next step. So I'm going to let this go and dry. And um, it may be necessary because of the glitter to add another layer of epoxy over top of that. So I'll get to that point and um, come back 
and we will deal with the peekaboo aspect of this. Okay, I um, am on to the next step. I did not do another coat of epoxy on here because I can use the glitter to my advantage um, with just little pokey pieces running through. So you can see my base color throughout. You can see actually what happens with um, gravity with mica powders and stuff is this rim here, the, epo or the epoxy and glitter will pull away from the rim. So I've got this circle around the outside that um, <clears throat> is, you can see my spray paint. That's why I always base coat my color and same with around the top. You can see where it's pulled away from the top. That's just a gravity thing. That's what happens. Um, you can combat that a little bit if you're um, working with strictly micas and you don't want any of your base color to show through by waiting 15 minutes, <clears throat> leaving, like leaving some of your epoxy in the cups and, um, and then just dragging it up with um, a silicone brush or, or something, um, but I just, I find it just as easy to paint the top and I'm actually going to be covering most of this with a wood grain because it's supposed to mimic a wood, um, a, a river table. So, and again, my, my brain wasn't working when I was doing this initially. So instead of the spots of glitter that I had planned, just little streaks of glitter throughout, um, all blew apart when I applied my heat gun to it. So unfortunately I've got more glitter coverage than I wanted, but we'll just roll with it because you know, there's no wrong way to do things. It's just, okay, well that's what happened. So we'll just work with that. So anyway, um, now what I'm going to do, I could, just spray paint over this and then take acetone and um, a, a cloth and just work and work and work to remove it like a geode. Um, the, the geode cups, not, not the ones that you do like the V and you fill it all in with all these different colors, but the, the geodes that you expose the bottoms of, um, that style of cup is made a whole lot easier with vinyl. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do vinyl in a, a wavy kind of strip to mimic a live edge and across the bottom and up again. So it's just all one continuous thing. And then um, I'll work on some little offshoots to where I'm doing it, but I'm just gonna do it with, an, it's best to use, you can use whatever vinyl you want. Um, however, permanent vinyl has a more permanent style of adhesive to it. That's what makes it permanent. And it's going to be a little harder to remove. And you want to make sure you don't leave it sit on the cup too long because it make it a lot harder to remove. And it'll leave potentially a residue that you need to deal with and you need to deal with that by um, rubbing it off with alcohol and that might mess up your design at the end. So um, try to use removable vinyl. Now this color, I don't know, maybe I could make some trees out of it, but I tend to hand paint uh, my pine trees, but it, it just came in a pack of other colors and it is the Cricut removable vinyl and um, it's not likely something I'm going to use anytime soon. It just came in a package of random colors so I'm going to do that and I'm going to take it first and then even measure how big I need it to be. There's no point in cutting it bigger than it needs. Let's 
that's all, all this one's going to be used for is doing these kinds of um, peekaboo kind of looks. So I want this to be, oh, I don't know about that wide. And I'm just going to do it like a live edge on a, on a, on a board like you do see with the tables. and just randomly put curves in there. This part's just a little too pointy. And I'm going to do the same on the other side and it doesn't need to be, it doesn't need to follow the same kinds of, of curves because live edges are, are just the, the, just that, they're just the edges of trees after they've been Cut, but not all sanded down. So I want to figure out because anything that I'm covering up now is going to be exposed. So just take a look at your cup and figure out where it looks the best to you. And so that's got kind of a nice little feature right there. So I'm going to put this piece here on this edge. And I'm going to put the straight edge down because I'm going to carry that over with my next piece. It doesn't really matter. This has got, this is a modern curve, so that doesn't really matter how flat you get your vinyl to sit because you're just going to be ripping it up anyway. It's not a permanent feature to your cup. So if only I could get it to start peeling, that would be really great. So this is buckling and stuff. That's fine. That's just fine for what you're doing. You just basically need to make sure your edges are stuck down so you don't get paint up underneath of them. Because after this step, I'm going to spray paint. So I'm covered, my edges are pressed. I'm going to take this part about as wide as it needs to flow. So I'm going to get it to there. I can do such precise measuring. So what I'm doing here is I've, I've cut this narrower strip because it's the bottom, so it's kind of narrow. So I'm going to try and get it so it lines basically up with my top here, but has the narrowest part. On the cup so that there's still a flow.
And I'm going to, because I don't want this rim to be painted over, so I'm going to apply this over top of my vinyl here so I can fold it over my edge. And wrinkling and buckling again mean absolutely nothing to my process here except for right there because it's jagged. You just want kind of a smooth line on the outside edge. And you can fix some of this when we when we do the step after we peel it off. Okay, last part right here. to start. You know, it's just random and organic. You just kind of just go with it. Because what's going to happen is we're going to scuff up our edges with a little bit of alcohol to blend them all really well. Okay, and again I'm going to line this up. That's already there. And just let it flow upwards on the cup. All righty. So for this next part, I am going to um, just cover up this little bit here. I am going to um, spray paint, and where I spray paint I really can't take you. So I'm going to spray paint this, I'm going to spray paint it Rust-Oleum 2X espresso first so I get a dark brown base and then I'm going to spray a flat white over top of it so that I can do my wood grain and um, and I'll come back and show you how we do that and then show you how we um, take off the, the, the vinyl and um, make magic happen so I'll be back Okay, I have spray painted um, over the um, the water effect, and I spray painted espresso brown, and then I spray painted flat white on top of it. Flat really works best with alcohol inks um, when you're doing this sort of thing, so I, I always use a flat white for that. So. I wasn't too concerned about here because I'm just peeling all of this off anyway, so there's no point in covering it up with with the spray paint, but I've got all of the glitter parts covered with the spray paint. Now I'm going to do a wood grain, and I want, usually I just use either straight um, teak wood or a combination of teak wood and ginger, and I want a deep, rich Kind of color for this so I have this um, it's rosewood and it's it's a very reddish brown and I have teak wood this is this is teak wood 
Um, they're both Tim Holtz, and I'm going to run them together. This is just another teak wood because this is getting really close to empty, so I'm just going to have this ready in case I need it. And I have, this is the kind of brush I use. It's a stiff bristled, um, I think they call it a chip brush, but it's a stiff bristled brush. And I tend to actually not clean it often because I only use it for wood grains. And when your alcohol ink, the alcohol um, evaporates, but it leaves the pigment behind. And when I go to use this, all of the pigment that is in here will wake up and it will just add depth um, to my color. So I don't clean them very often, but when I do clean them, I, I soak them down with alcohol really good first. And, um, and that just takes it all out, but it's, or most of it out. But unless I'm doing, like I did a, a Les Paul Sunburst guitar um, that was an orange fading to a red, um, in that case, I needed to make sure I had super clean brushes because I didn't want any browns getting in there that didn't belong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and this is how I do all of my wood grains. When you're doing a wood grain, if you do short, choppy strokes, you're going to get end up with short, choppy looking, and it doesn't look like wood grain. As much as possible, you want to just do a single pass and bring it all the way down. So, in order to get that to happen, I run a line all the way down. And I'm going to run, because I'm working with two colors, I'll run them side by side and they'll blend together. And you can see you're going to get the lines that you would get in wood. So right from the bottom down to the top, you don't want to be stopping in the middle, you just want it to flow. I put down, this is actually, uh, I got it at Michael's, it's a Wilton um, fondant rolling mat and it's super big so it, it um, gives me good coverage. And all I gotta do is take a paper towel with some alcohol on it to clean up the ink because you can see it splatters. And you can see the depth that I'm getting with using these two different colors. It's rosewood and teak wood and um, it's giving me the look that I want and I'm just going to go over top of because of my my curves. I'm going to go over top of my vinyl. Sorry, I lost the word there for a second. Even though I'm going to peel it up, I just want to make sure I get all of the spots where it needs to go. I really am loving, I've not mixed these two before, I'm really loving it. And I've got some bare spot there that didn't come in quite enough, so I'm going to just redo over that. Alcohol ink is a replacer, so if you, I could go over this with a completely different color at this point and it would change the color. So that's looking really good I think and it's gonna look really good against that blue so now I'm gonna do this other side here
And you can choose if you want it just to be a plain, smooth table without um, any kind of knots or anything in it. You can choose to do that or you can make knots. You gotta be careful for the runaways here. That's where you end up making knots because see it lifts up what was there before. So that's kind of what I choose to do in those areas is just make a knot. And then it just looks like that was a natural thing that happened. So I'm going to, it's a little too red right there. And wood has different variations in color. So you can see I've got, this is, this is lighter than this and, and whatnot. So, and that's, that's great and that's okay. But you don't want anything to look, if it looks too much like a brush mark, you want to get rid of it. So I'm going to um, maybe just do a, a spot here and I'm just going to kind of wiggle my brush back and forth instead of brushing it out so it looks kind of like an elongated brain feature. And until such time as the ink is dry, you can move the ink. And so if you go really slowly, instead of brushing it out, you can brush in these really dark um, kind of lines. And I'm going to do another one, I think, down here. to come kind of to a point so you can use a smaller brush for this as well and you can turn it around so you're doing it from the other side and you're just pushing it over It's in this case very subtle, but this is supposed to look to me like it's a finely milled table. So it's it's not as rustic as um, sometimes they are. There's a little dip right here. I'm going to make sure I'm filling in here. I'm just creating little contrasts in any place where it didn't fully cover. Just to keep it consistent, I need to keep both of them mixing together. And you can wiggle your brush to get Apparently time to uh, get new cool noodles in here. As I just have now that darker line going throughout, so it, it just adds interest and character. The tricky part now is carrying this grain into my bottom. So this is going this way, but my grain is coming this way. The tape, the tape is going lengthwise. Sorry, I was totally off camera there. Um, this way, but my grain is going this way on both of my my sections. So I'm going to brush this way. So I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to drop my ink in a line, and hopefully it doesn't do that. It's kind of hard to show you this part. I'm going to do just a 
drop there and a drop there and I'm going to brush it out just so the grain carries down so it looks kind of like a flat piece that wraps around and I'm just doing by drops and not doing full lines I'm going to do the same on this side. The tape's going to stop it from wrecking too, too much, I think. Okay. I just don't have anything up here that I need to deal with because of doing that. And I'm good. So this, I really like this combination with teak wood and rosewood. It came out awesome. So here is where we can now um, take off the vinyl. So I'm just going to use my little hook here because I have gloves on. I always try to remember to put my gloves on before working with alcohol ink because I, I, I'm a mess and I get alcohol ink all over me and I don't really want it on my hands steaming. So now you can just take it and peel up your vinyl. And I've got paint bleed and stuff underneath, and I didn't quite get that. So you can see it's kind of a mess, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, a Q-tip and put some alcohol on it, and I'm going to scuff up my edges. So any of the where the vinyl was buckled and, and it went um, funky or or this like I got under bleed um, or this spot where I didn't quite get it wood grained I will fix all of that in my next step here so let's get all of this vinyl off and this is removable vinyl it's been sitting for a couple of days but it's removable so it if I if I had used permanent vinyl for this step I would be struggling a lot harder trying to get it up and I would be leaving a sticky residue behind. The re removable does not leave a sticky re residue behind. You can also use transfer tape for this, but um, no guarantee about the residue because I don't know if that does or not. But I, I think I've got the makings of something really quite fantastic here. So let's get this last piece up. You could make these as wide or as narrow as you want. Um, I didn't want to be wasting all of this beautiful blue. So I did make them quite wide.
These are the same instructions for a basic peekaboo, so you just wouldn't have it all together in one line usually. So this is the beginnings of, you can see I had some underneath bleed there, but we're going to fix that. Hopefully the browns can stain the epoxy, so hopefully that doesn't happen. I'm going to leave these open in case I need to do some touch-ups. And I'll be, um, I'll get my alcohol and my Q-tips ready and I'll be right back. So I don't know what happened. My camera just turned off, so I don't know where we're at. Um, but, so I've taken alcohol and I have, um, tried to take off where it under bled. And you can see, if you look really closely, that the alcohol did stain the epoxy but it's on the epoxy layer so I should be able to um, sand that lightly and get it out so but the one thing that happens when you're doing this kind of thing because alcohol takes off alcohol ink is that happened so um, I need to touch that up but I'm not gonna bother with it right now until I get my edges a little bit more um, the way I want them to be. So I know that what I'm going to do here is I have alcohol saturated my um, Q-tip. Now you can do those geode cups like this too and it works fantastic because you can just use waste vinyl or whatever and peel it off instead of spending all that time with acetone trying to get rid of your spray paint. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use some pressure and scuff up the edges a little bit so it's not quite such a hard line. And because I've got brown spray paint under here, it also reveals the edge of the brown sp spray paint. Except it's taking off more of the alcohol ink than I want, but I will touch that up as we go along. Because I don't want a pristine line, I want it to look like a live edge. And it does take a little bit of pressure to get this. And then you watch out for steaming as you go. And you're going to go through more than one Q-tip doing this. Had I sealed my inks, I wouldn't be having them lift on me here, but um, I would have a harder time trying to get down to the spray paint too. So it's a catch 22 here, but we'll, we'll make that look good when we are all finished here. So you can see where it looks more like a natural edge than this. This is just a crisp, solid line, and we don't want that. We want it to be more like this. So we'll we'll um, we'll figure out how to how to get that so it's looking really great. And it doesn't just look like I just removed all of my alcohol ink on there, but that's that's um, that's essentially it. So if you and you can see a little bit of the brown line underneath of it, you want to just be cleaning your alcohol or your your ink off of the blue as you go. Just 
just to minimize the amount of sanding you're going to have to do. And don't forget to do the bottom. Okay, so you get the gist of this now. I am going to um, put this on pause because you don't need to be watching me do this whole thing, but that's how, how you do it. And I will come back when it comes time to, to when I get all my edges done, I can then um, show you how we're gonna fix anything that happened in the meantime. Okay, so I have all of my edges all scuffed up so they look a little bit more like a natural edge um, that you would have on one of those live edge tables. Now I have these two smaller brushes. The bristles are the same as, um, as the chip brush that I was using, so it, it's, they're coarse. And um, that's where you get the grain lines from, is the coarseness of the brush. So what I'm going to do, instead of, just set that on my stand here, instead of dripping my ink back on to my piece to fix it, I'm going to drip the ink onto my brush and then brush it on where I need to fix it. So, um... It just is more controlled that way. It's not um, going to run away. So I'm going to, when I drip it on, this is the teak wood. So I'm going to do two drips, one on each side. And then I'm going to put two drips of the rosewood in the spaces between. And then I'm going to brush it on. Hopefully it will cover up more. I waited too long. Too much talking. Not enough doing. So again I'm going to drip rosewood, teak wood, and I've got these spots here and I'm just going to brush them out and basically erase them. And again, this is where we're going to end up with some natural, I have too much teak wood in there, I kind of lost control of what I was doing. And then we can take the edge of the brush Rosewood. And again, you want to go top to bottom so that your grain stays even. And now I can take the edge of my brush and just kind of fill in the areas where too much I'm not going to follow it along in the same pattern, like draw a line, because my grain will get messed up. So I'm just going to dab it down, and if it goes over the line a little bit into the blue, that's okay, because it's just part of the live edge. Need to make a little knot somewhere because things aren't working out just the way you want to. And just play around. Oh, 
kind of moving the ink around and it will give you that effect. Of a little knot right there. So you'd never know that I had that situation going on just a minute ago. So I'm really actually loving how this is coming out. Wood grains are one of my all time favorite things to do because they come together fairly quickly and easily and they look so stunning. This, I think this bottle is just about done. Okay, so again, I want to just take my brush and just follow along as if it's grain my edge here. do some blending into the piece so it doesn't look so much like you just painted an edge. Always remember you want to keep straight and you want to keep top to bottom. Doesn't that look fantastic? So I'm just going to keep on doing this same thing, so I'll be back. Okay, so I have gone around and um, touched up all of my edges. And so you'd never know that they were all scuffed up like that. And I have some, some little features like um, just little darker spots and little lighter spots throughout. And I've done the bottom. Now you can see I've got some staining happening here. And alcohol won't pull that off because it stained the actual epoxy. Um, so what I'm going to do, I have this little square of sandpaper. This one is... Um, 320 grit so I'm going to try to sand it off and um, see how that does to take get rid of it or at least lighten it enough that it's not noticeable this kind of sanding does not make a great deal of dust so you don't have to worry so much about um, breathing in the, the dust but because <laughs> but because I've only got one layer of glitter on, or epoxy, I don't have another layer of epoxy over my glitter my glitter is turning silver so that's a bit of a bad thing so um, we're just gonna have to work with that for this particular process because I can't now put um, epoxy over this to protect it. So, lesson learned when doing this kind of work, always put an extra layer of epoxy over because um, now I have some silver glitter where I don't want it to be. It's all just a giant experiment anyway. If I was going to make this as a customer cup, I would not keep going with this because I've just wrecked it. If, you, if I was just using mica powder instead of glitter, it would not have been an issue.
but I need to clean up the mess, so we'll just keep on going. It's good to learn from our mistakes, isn't it? It's just going to look like I have some random um, silver pieces in here. So ultimately, if I didn't know what it's supposed to look like, it wouldn't be so much of an issue. The sanding does work for the staining, though. So what I'm going to do, because I can't just exactly go and put this raw under the sink, um, water is not necessarily going to hurt the the wood grain. It's not. It's not as much as alcohol ultimately will. But I'm going to um, just grab a corner of this paper towel and just put just a little bit of alcohol on here and wipe off any of my dust in my areas that I've just sanded and it'll help to clean anything on the edge. I usually do not recommend putting alcohol wiping down your cups because it can actually cause problems with fish eyes, but I'm going to make sure that this is good and dry before I'm going to put my epoxy on and I'm about to seal my wood grain. So except for my little oops, this actually looks like a pretty fantastic cup right now. And because of that, I'm going to tell you, I know that there are so many differing opinions because every time somebody asks a question in a Facebook group about sealing alcoholics, some people say um, they don't seal, they just let it dry for 24 hours. Or... Um, they don't they, they don't seal at all and nothing happens or they seal and it changes color but it changes back. I don't know where their eyes are because I've never had one change back that changed green. If it changes green, it changes green and it's usually done. Um, but I'm going sorry this was spur of the moment. I'm going to show you something. This is a palette of alcohol inks. Um, when the, the ink evaporates, it leaves behind the pigment. And this has been drying in here, been in here for months. So I'm going to show you what happens when I put a little bit of alcohol in here and maybe get a, you know, a Q tip. So I have a little bit of alcohol in this well now. Turns right back to ink. So um, letting it dry has no effect on whether or not it's going to change under the epoxy. What's going to affect whether or not it changes under the epoxy is um, the alcohol ink itself. Some of them change a lot. Some of like purples. Purples will turn to a, a light blue in some cases. Purple Twilight never put raw underneath epoxy because it will always in drip into epoxy. It will always turn blue. That's just what the its composition of its um, pigments does. And so the ones who have not had an issue, it's not because they've let it dry for 24 or 48 hours, it's because the ink that they're using, um, the pigment 
is more stable than in other inks. Some of the inks are specifically designed to split into different colors. That's because alcohol ink artists do things differently with them than we do. And um, they're just designed that way. So when you have a, a purple that turns to blue, it is designed to do that under alcohol for the art. So um, always, 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 always seal your alcohol inks. Even if you um, have one that's not going to change color on you, um, it may blur under um, the epoxy or it may shift and move or mix into the epoxy. Like there are so many different variables that can happen and always seal with a water-based sealer. Now I have found for me it works the best to just brush a coat of Mod Podge over top of and I'm going to do that here momentarily. Um, our alcohol ink artists use a thing called Kmar varnish and it's a water-based varnish but what it does is it fixes the ink and then you have to add a clear spray paint to it. Never put clear spray paint over alcohol ink because it will react just like it does with epoxy, um, especially if you're a little heavy handed with it. So always, 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 always brush a layer of Mod Podge over top of your alcohol ink pieces when you paint them on like this because um, Yes, a wood grain does not take a great deal of time, but the epoxy will be, or the, the alcohol ink will behave differently over cured epoxy than it does over paint, uh, raw spray paint. So if you um, have something happen and you need to touch it up, it's not going to be the same. So always seal. So I'll be back in just a second and get my stuff for that and get this stuff out of the way and we'll seal this up. Okay, this is a Mod Podge Teclon brush. Um, the Teclon really does work the best with Mod Podge and actually um, the Crystallac Glitter Glue, which I actually prefer to Mod Podge, um, but I'm just going to use Mod Podge right now. So um, the reason I prefer the Crystallac Glitter Glue is it washes out of my brush a lot more easily. This tends to dry stiff after I've used the Mod Podge with it. Any Teclon brush will do, and you know it's Teclon by the color of the bristles. These amber colored bristles are what you want to use when you're using glue. So um, I'm going to, this is my Mod Podge. I put it in this, um, this condiment bottle with the silicone lid, and I find it works the best for me this way because I can just pop it off and go. Sometimes I need to pull the glue out of the funnel part here but it's an easy it's an easy thing because it doesn't stick to the silicone but it, I just find it pours so much better this is the yellow label I don't know if it matters that's just what I had so and the yellow label is I believe matte glue but I've not had an issue with it not shining up really well under the under epoxy so I'm just going to um, just draw a line with that's why I have it in this bottle so I can just do this it's really great for fabric tumblers and I'm just going to just brush it over my wood grain I don't need it over the glitter but you know it's gonna get there Now, if I really, really wanted to, I could at this point um, put a little bit of the glitters that I messed up here on. I'm not going to. You don't need a great lot. You just need to get a nice, even coat over top of the wood grain and when it dries it will be nicely sealed 
and will not alter any way guaranteed underneath your epoxy. If it, well, I can't say guaranteed, I guess, because I can't guarantee that, but I have not had um, anything shift, move, change, change color, change texture. I have never had any of that using the Mod Podge. So um, if you do, then there is something different in your craft room than mine because uh, I have not had that happen to me at all and I have done a lot of these so I'm just gonna let this dry and um, and then we can start moving to epoxy. So um, I'll be back. <laughs> 